Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'll be reviewing the Jay Sakura Initial Max Turntable with the uh, Jay Sakura KV12 Tone Arm. I hope you enjoy it. All right, let's talk about the Jay Sakura Initial Max Turntable to start with. I've said before that turntables are tricky to review because inevitably it's a system. Really, that's true with pretty much all audio gear, but it's certainly true for turntables. I'll do my best to unpack this for you. Let's start with what the turntable is. Jay Sikora is a Polish manufacturer of turntables. They uh, have their roots in metalworking and industrial machining. So you can kind of see the influence of that when you look at the turntable. The initial max is near the entry level to the Jay Sikora line. Uh, but it's not an entry-level turntable by any means. This is priced in the mid-teens. The uh, tone arm that they sent it with is the KV-12 tone arm, and that's in the you know nearly $10,000 range. So we're not talking about an inexpensive rig here by any means, but Jay Sikora goes up from there and... Uh, I think has clear aspirations to be the state-of-the-art turntable at each price point where they're operating. To put that into perspective, and I, I hope I've been clear in pretty much all of my reviews that I don't think specifications or technical explanations are really what we're here for. Sometimes technical explanations are useful so that we can see if some new technical approach bore the fruit that the designers intended. Uh, it gives us a place to look, but honestly, we're going to listen to sound quality and evaluate that against the absolute sound, and, you know, that's what we do. Still, the technical elements of this are interesting, and in the case of the initial Max. This is a beast of a turntable. Uh, it weighs 110, 112 pounds. Uh, it's got two motors. You can put two tone arms on board. Uh, it's got a separate power supply box and a separate motor control box. So the electronics are high effort, uh, extensive, thought process kind of thing, you know, again, whether that matters or not is something we can only tell by sound quality. But as you can see on the screen, this is, you know, not a variation on, a, you know, standard belt drive kind of turntable or a standard direct drive kind of turntable that you would find at lower price points. Uh, I think that's interesting. To be honest with you, the build quality seems very high in most elements. So, you know, I, I was impressed by the whole operation. I also think Jay Sikora has put some careful thought into each of the elements of the turntable and the tone arm. It has a glass platter, for example. So the... Um, LP is mounted to a very stiff, non-compliant surface. The uh, record weight, here I'll show you, this uh, pins the LP to the turntable, and I would guess, we'll put it on screen, but this feels like it weighs in the realm of two or three pounds. It's, it's a solid machined piece of metal that's, you know, heavy duty. Um, but to give you an example of the kind of thought process here, you can run it in light mode or in heavyweight mode or not at all. So 
they're they're sweating the details here. That's really what I'm trying to emphasize, and I thought that was kind of nice. Another example of that is they've used a two motor system, so it's a belt drive turntable. Each motor has uh, two belts, and uh, motors are on opposite sides of the platter, so they're trying to balance out the forces on the bearings and the platter so that uh, they're not causing undue wear or causing rumble or noise effects from the uh, asymmetrical positioning of a motor. They've, they're using uh, opposing motors to balance out the forces at work there. Again, it's a little bit hard to say what that does or doesn't do until we get to the sound quality portion where I can talk about the whole package. The tone arm, the KV-12 tone arm, is a Kevlar tone arm. So you'll know Kevlar is a woven material, uh, somewhat like carbon fiber, although the fibers are different and the resins are different. Um, but it's it, it, the intention is to make an extremely stiff arm tube that's also very low mass. Um, again, it's beautifully finished and it uses a unipivot design. Uh, if you've paid attention to the design of tone arms in the past, you'll know that unipivots have a single bearing point and the, there's a cup uh, mounted to the arm tube that can rotate around the unipivot. The endeavor here is to minimize friction and minimize frictional noises. There are pros and cons to every bearing approach. Um, I did also use a Kuzma 4.9 inch tone arm. The KV-12 is, as you might guess, a 12 inch tone arm. Uh, I did use the uh, Kuzma 4.9 inch arm, which has a more traditional bearing assembly where uh, there are bearings in uh, all three dimensions of movement. Uh, and so it's a different, somewhat different tone arm concept. Um, again, it's essentially impossible to compare these things directly because you're going to have a different setup as you move cartridges from tone arm to tone arm. But I'll give you my uh, general impressions about how all of this works when we get to the sound quality section. But in any event, the, the KV-12 tone arm is... Uh, an attempt to build a long 12 inch tone arm so you limit the tracking errors that you have due to the sweep of the tone arm across the record as you're playing it and still have a low mass tone arm that works well with a wide variety of cartridges. Uh, we'll Get back to that in a second after the break. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack, first of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, Readers will submit questions, we'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. Okay, hopefully I gave you some tasty tidbits about the Jay Sakura turntable and arm. Uh... Let me also note that the um, primary cartridge that I used in the KV-12 was a DS Audio 003 optical cartridge. Uh, optical, I always like to note, doesn't mean that it's reading the surface of the record with light. It means that the way that the uh, stylus and cantilever movement is sensed is by optical means rather than electromagnetic means as you would have in a moving magnet or a moving coil cartridge. Uh, in the Kuzma arm, I primarily used uh, Benz Micro Gullwing SLR, uh, a cartridge that I'm quite fond of. 
and so that was the basis of my setup. The DS Audio uses its own, there's a DS003 Phono preamp. You can use it with any of the Phono preamps that work with DS cartridges, which include the DS line plus Meitner Mix, several uh, optical cartridge adapter boxes. And in the case of the Benz Micro, I used the Musical Surroundings Phenomena 3 Phono Stage. Um, and then that went into the remainder of my reference system, which you can see in the show notes. Uh, the Benz Micro, I want to note, I used with the Phenomena 3 because the Phenomena 3 has a lot of uh, resistance and capacitance adjustments, which uh, in the case of the this particular Benz Micro cartridge, you, you need that because it has a slightly unusual impedance requirement. Uh, not, not that unusual, but uh, anyway, you, you want to nail that down. So I, I used that phono preamp from among the ones I've got a choice of. And uh, that's the, the setup all the way to the preamp. Um, okay. Let's talk about sound quality. The thing I noticed, and I've had during, I've had the J Sakura Initial Max for about six months now. The thing I noticed that was the standout quality of this turntable compared to seven or eight other turntables I've had in the reference system during that time period is the absolutely rock solid perhaps i should say metal solid but anyway the rock solid sense of stability and noiselessness I, you i think you can imagine that you want the turntable not to be vibrating or otherwise interfering with the motion of the stylus and the cantilever assembly, and that means the turntable has to be extremely stable. That's a description of what it needs to do. I'm talking about a sonic sense of stability, a sense that the um, rotational speed of the platter doesn't vary, and a sense that the noise level is extremely low and therefore the signal and especially the low level signals that you're trying to extract from the record like the decay of instruments the decay of sound in the hall by decay of instruments i mean not that the instruments are literally decaying but you have uh, almost all instruments are based on a resonance and that resonance tends to get lower and lower and lower level in level over time and you want to pick that up because that's how you know exactly what the sound of the instrument is. And that's a lot of what the instrument maker was trying to design in when he or she did the design and fabrication of the instrument. So th that ability to convey low level sounds, whether they're reflections in the hall or the club, or whether they're the decay of instrumental sounds is a kind of an un well, it's not undiscussed but it's it's an i believe an underdiscussed element of what makes the difference between great and good equipment in the audio world if your noise floor is low enough people sometimes call it a black background that means that these lower level signals can be heard without the interference of noise and that's a very valuable feature and i found that the initial max was as close to noiseless as i've heard in a turntable it i, I have not heard them but it would be really interesting to hear the standard max or the reference max uh, turntable, which are the ones positioned above this in the line to see if I could even tell the difference. I 
I'm always surprised by how easy it is to hear differences between components, so I'm guessing that the answer is yes. But set that aside, the initial Max just delivers a beautifully noise-free background which allows the micro detail, the hall sound, and the instrument sound to shine through beautifully. That as a musical element is very important once you've heard it and uh, it also comes through in the ability of the turntable to drive a system that has very good imaging because imaging to some degree depends on these low level sounds because the microphones that have made the recording have been picking up the location and the distance of these reflections in the club or in the hall and that's important to the sense of spaciousness and the locational information that's on the recording coming through and allowing you to accurately position the performers. So I may seem to be harping on this idea but it's because this simple idea of low noise or black background so it sounds like specification hounds gone insane when in fact if you tie it back to what it does musically the spatial presentation and the accurate harmonic presentation of voices and instruments is actually something I think you can just go well duh uh, of course that's important this turntable does those spaciousness things and those harmonic richness things brilliantly and that's why I enjoyed it so much. I hope you're understanding what I'm trying to communicate there. The second thing that I tend to look for as a hallmark of great source equipment, I mean it's true of everything, but it really seems to be a differentiator when we're talking about source equipment is does the signal that we're getting, does that signal allow you to easily and in detail differentiate between different components? In this case, the most obvious example is when you use the initial max, is it like in stark relief that you're using two different cartridges or are the distinctions between the cartridges kind of blurred and i don't mean the sound is blurry but you, you just the, the distinctiveness the character of the cartridge doesn't stand out now those of you who've heard my other turntable reviews will know i'm a big fan of using multiple cartridges because uh, all cartridges have inaccuracies all cartridges have a sonic signature and it's relatively easy it's not inexpensive but it's relatively easy to have multiple cartridges especially when you have a multi-tone arm set up like the one that is my review sample here. And I find that very enjoyable because there are different cartridge setups that seem to work better on different LPs and on different kinds of LPs. And I'll be honest with you, frankly, based on my kind of listening mood. And I think that's something that a lot of people who have tried multiple cartridges can relate to. So I want to be able to hear those distinctions because I, I'm i not upset with the fact that in this case, the DS-003 and the Benz Micro Gullwing sound different. I'm trying to enjoy and explore that. And this turntable does an outstanding job of making those differences very clear and very easy to hear. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, this might sound like something you want or you don't want. I'll leave that to your judgment. There are a lot of cartridges and there are many different flavors and cartridges in a turntable like this uh, sound distinctly different. In the case of the DS Audio, the DS Audio has a sense of clarity that is almost digital-like without having the digital 
distortions that I think bother some people about digital, especially uh, mid-tier, not high-res digital. Um, and that clarity on LPs is, in my view, a wonderful thing to behold because it's kind of the best of both worlds. You get the analogness, uh, music minus any of those somewhat amusical digital distortions that you're probably familiar with. And you get the uh, clarity and purity of tone and spatial presentation that you may be accustomed to with digital. I thought that, that I mean, I really like the DS uh, cartridge, and this is the entry-level DS. I can only imagine what the uh, big brothers of this sound like, but I found it very enjoyable and usable. I have to give some credit here possibly to the tone arm as well. Uh, you can set up, and I did set up the uh, Kuzma arm or any 9-inch arm. You can use an alignment that for LPs that don't go very close to the label, you can set it up with an alignment that pretty much gives you the tracing error that you would have with a 12-inch arm. But there's something about the KV-12 that just adds a little extra sense of, again, I'm going to say stability to the proceedings that I thought worked really well. It was very harmonious with what the DS cartridge is trying to do. Then when I used the Benz Micro, and this isn't really a review of these cartridges, I'm just trying to explain why having a multi-tone arm setup where the underlying turntable reveals what the cartridge can do. So my other example would be when I used the Benz Micro, the Benz Micro is just, it's, beautiful and lush and poetic without being thick and turgid and obscured. It's, it's, it's putting these things together that really is where magic occurs. And it's what, ha I mean, this is a, this cartridge has been around for 10 years or so. So, you know, it's not the latest and greatest, although I'm not 100% clear that cartridge technology advances anything like computer technology. I think that's a goofy way to think about it. So the fact that it's a 10-year-old cartridge doesn't matter to me. And the total quality of this cartridge without veiling or obscurity is a wonderful thing in uh, this particular Kuzma arm. And I greatly enjoyed it. But the fundamental point I'm trying to make here is that the initial max turntable allowed the cartridge tone arm combinations to do what I believe they are capable of doing. Could there be something even better than this? It's entirely possible. But if you heard these two tone arm cartridge combinations compared to one another, you would have no doubt as to there being a big difference. And I have no doubt that you know you could immediately identify on many good recordings which cartridge tone arm combination you were listening to which you know that sort of a reviewer ish angle which to me is from thinking trying to think about this from your perspective is a who cares thing but what you're getting is you're getting what the cartridge was born to do and in that sense, again, it was the second reason that I fell in love with the uh, initial Max turntable. The final thing I'll say about the turntable is it, I mean, this may or may not be a big deal to you, but it just worked. You, you turn it on, it comes up to speed. You put the uh, record on the platter, put this, this is not that easy to lift. This tone arm weight or the uh, platter weight on it, and you know, away you go. And I've had it for six months, and it just uh, there's just nothing really weird or unusual about it. 
The other thing I should mention that's uh, not weird or unusual is the way the uh, tonar mounts go onto the turntable it gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility if you want to change tone arms or uh, and I'm not suggesting that you want to switch tone arms you could but I'm not that's not what I'm getting at it's just if you wanted to upgrade your tone arm at some point or try a different tone arm the 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 locational flexibility of this particular mounting method together with the fact that we're talking about big beefy pieces of steel I think uh is a, a very nice convenience feature that, you know, I've, again, I don't know how upgrade-oriented you are, and some of you will be in different places on, in that regard. But anyway, it's, it's, in, it, it's, it almost makes it easy to use. There is the matter of a highly flexible tonar mounting s- system gives you a little bit of room to play and get yourself in trouble. But if you follow the directions, uh, I think you're pretty much good to go. So I hope I've been clear that I think the initial max is an outstanding turntable. Uh, It is not inexpensive, but in a world of the kinds of turntables we have now at the high end, Uh, It's not that expensive either, and I think this really represents the entry level to the -the state-of-the-art zone in turntable land, and I'm not sure you really have to go any further, although, you know, that's me imposing my values on you, and you, you can do that for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I enjoyed making the video. I hope uh, you will come back. To come back, please click on the subscribe button. Please click on the notification bell. Uh, Subscribe to our weekly newsletters. And we've been publishing it for 50 years. Uh, Our flagship publication is the Absolute Sound magazine, and we would enjoy it if you would join us there. It's the cost of two cups of coffee a year. You should have this. Thanks.